What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel Critical Overload here. So I'm talking about Halloween ends in this video here today and talking about some new tidbits that came out. One from Christopher Nelson and another one from John Carpenter himself. Now Christopher Nelson was... This was during a new episode of, of, of a podcast of the show, The Thing with Two Heads. And I'll leave a link to the video in the description. Uh, but this is a YouTube show that's co-hosted by Sean Clark and uh, FX makeup artist Christopher Nelson, who has worked on all of the previous three Michael Myers Halloween movies from David Gordon Green, Blumhouse, Halloween, Halloween Kills, and now Halloween Ends. So he had this to say during that, that new recent episode about Halloween Ends. He said that I'm excited for people to see the movie. I think it's weird, it's different, and I like that. He also had this to say about the reshoots that took place, revealing that they actually only took place four days and not two weeks, like I know I was saying, because that's what uh, some other credible sources were saying as well. We know the reshoots actually did occur, but they didn't just they didn't last that long. They only lasted four days. So he said, I went and did Halloween reshoots. I'm not going to talk a lot about it because I can't. I did that and it went well. It was very busy. We didn't do a whole lot. It wasn't two weeks like everyone's saying it was. It was like four days, but it went well. And I was very happy with everything. We had a good time and I'm excited for people to see the movie. Now, the comments he made, I know they had some people going wild because like it's just like, I guess, the weird word choices people involved with this movie are using to describe it. Jamie Lee Curtis talking about the movie is going to gonna piss some people off or it's going to F you up. And this this person here, Christopher Nelson, <laughs> calling the movie weird different and i like that now being weird <laughs> doesn't have to be bad but of course to some people they didn't say it's weird what like what the hell does that mean when honestly before i talk about this i'll just get into what john carpenter himself recently had to say john carpenter had a recent interview where i think he was talking about the the things 40th anniversary this is with sci-fi wire when asked about halloween ends john carpenter said well it's halloween and it ends. He said, you'll see that it's a departure from the others. It's interesting. Dave is a really good director. I love working with him. And he didn't say anything further than that. But the other interesting thing there was how he said it's a departure from the others. What the hell does that mean? <laughs> so to me, the only way this can be a departure from the other movies or the other sequels that we've been getting is if you do a deep dive into the characters like never before, like never before done in any other Halloween movie. And by characters, of course, we're talking about the survivors, not Michael Myers himself. Doing a deep dive and exploring how this thing, this man, this monster, this essential larger than life boogeyman to them has impacted their psyche, how it has impacted their lives, how it has impacted their mental health, how it has impacted their day to day activities that they have going on and building up a dramatic connection with these characters before you shove us back into a night of terror for them when Michael Myers ultimately returns. I have stated, I think in other videos that I would like to see them go to an approach that shows us Michael Myers stalking a bit more and they don't even have to know he's there. We can know he's there and they don't. We see them dealing with all the trauma that they have going on throughout the day on Halloween or leading, maybe even do this, having the movie, because we know it's going to be set four years later, having the movie set on October 30th for like at least a good 30 minutes, maybe a good 20 minutes, and then jumping to Halloween night or Halloween the next day and building that up and maybe spending a good 30 minutes or another 20 during the day with the characters and just learning about them and getting to see Michael Myers walk around town seeing him stalk these characters they don't know he's there you the audience will and we're just along for the ride getting to see them in all this danger that's present it's getting it's doing nothing but getting you excited for what's to come because you know what's going to happen once the sun goes down all shit's going to hit the fan people are going to be out trick-or-treating Michael Myers is going to take advantage of that gonna terrorize people uh but during the day we're gonna get to hear about what allison's been up to what laurie's been up to hawkins if, if he ends up being in the movie which of course it's basically all but confirmed from him and from him himself will Patton that being getting to see what allison's been up to laurie Lindsay, other new characters get interact get introduced to them hear what they think about haddonfield and Hearing what other people who moved out of town maybe think about Haddonfield, if they have an impact or play some type of role in it. And then you get us introduced to all of that stuff, get us invested in those dynamics and get invested in those character arcs. 
And then the sun goes down, all hell breaks loose. It's Halloween night. Michael Myers is back. The boogeyman is here to F, F ish up. And nobody is prepared. Nobody but, of course, Lori, who probably was still holding out hope that Michael would return because she wants to take this guy down. And she wants to be the thing that puts the final nail in his coffin. Uh, she wants justice for what has been done to her, what's been done to her granddaughter what's been done to her son-in-law even though she didn't even really seem to care about him <laughs> and her daughter karen and maybe even Lindsay. because again we don't i don't know how close these characters are going to be it seems like those three are just going to be very close they seem like they're going to be a a trio of characters we're going to focus on three final girls not all of them of course are going to make it to the end but a deep dive in the characters is the only thing i can see that can be a complete departure from the other movies where unlike anything else ever before we are just learning about how Michael Myers has impacted them and learning about how it impacted their life and how these how this trauma has shaped them and how it shaped and affected the town of Haddonfield um, and the new things that are happening in Haddonfield as a result of Michael Myers in response to that. We know I've talked about this in another video about some things that we should expect because of what Phantom Empire has stated. He got told from reliable sources that have been correct in the past with them. Uh, Maybe there's even a new case of a new shape out there or something like that. Something that's very similar to Michael Myers. Maybe something like that goes down and then Michael Myers returns after the fact. Uh, and we get to see how it all unfolds on Halloween night. Get to see the final epic battle between Laurie and Michael. And then we can go from there. The whole It's Weird from Christopher Nelson. You know, I think honestly that It's Weird is the fact that it's more of a character study. The whole the whole comparison of it to being compared to Christine and stuff like that. Something just tells me this is going to be a lot more character driven than other Halloween movies. That's what I think the biggest departure is going to be. You're not just going to have bodies dropping all over the place. You're going to have kills, but the kills this time are going to be a lot more emotional based. Maybe because these characters are going to be that well developed and set up before all the carnage happens. Unlike Halloween 2018 and Halloween Kills. This will be a lot more character driven driven narrative. Let me know what you guys think about this down in the comment section below. If you haven't already, of course, make sure you subscribe. Turn on post notifications. You can never miss a video in the description. I'll have links on my social media accounts, my Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there, of course, to let me know if there's any movies, news, or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.